Jesus. You wish about all things. They have a wrong name, Prosper. Be a good hunter. Even as his son of Prosper. Turn the joy of Jesus. Rabbi Shekhar, you're the most sick and the Messiah. We command you to rise up out that sick bed. And Shekhar, you're the Messiah. In the name of Jesus, we command you. For the Lord to set up the most in our life. To be restored. And Shekhar, you're the Messiah. To be restored, let us seek a man of our side. Say, You shall be the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Following your mother, mother, now be yours, God. And be the last mother in the name of Jesus Christ, God. We command that virus to lose its heart in the name of Jesus. Following the blood of Jesus, of our Lord, you will have from the turn of our head of God to the soul of her feet of God. Shut up. 
and what an honor that he allowed us to serve him. Thank the Lord. He did not have to make us. He did not have to create us. He did not have to form us. But because of his agape love, he said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And let them have dominion upon this earth. And Father, we thank you that you were thinking about us, God. That you love us so much with such an agape love that you will leave the 99 and find that way with one in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, I lift up my nephew Jeremiah, God, in the name and in the blood of Jesus. Father, you say you knew him before you formed him and tell you his God. And Father, you say you give him a future and give him a hope. We command the spirit of blindness to be loose of his mind, his will, and his emotions in the name and in the blood of Jesus. I to speak, I prophesy, and I declare, God, that God, you will restore and renew in the name of Jesus and create a vision, God, of his destiny in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree he shall be greater in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth, hallelujah. And I command every satanic assignment to be broken of his destiny in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cast out every demonic assignment of my nephew Jeremiah in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For God, you gave him the name Jeremiah, and God is the name of a destiny prophet in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I command him to come out of the dark hole in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, and I shall light up upon his mind, I shall light up upon his will, I shall light up upon his emotion, God, in my city, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, yes Lord, hallelujah, Father, we give you the praise, and we give you the glory in Jesus' name, amen, amen. hallelujah, <laughs> yes Lord, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is war. We don't have time to buckle down. We don't have time to be a little warm this year. It is warfare. If there ever a time to fight, it is now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And give an honor to our pastor. Pastor Thomas Miller, our First Lady Beverly Miller, I give an honor to them. And to you, New Life Church of Faith, those of you that are here, those of you that join us on social media, we welcome you to the ministry of New Life Church of Faith, where we believe whosoever will, let them come. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. Give an honor to my family, my wife, hallelujah. To my sister, love, child, you, my God, daughter, Nikki. And to all the leadership that is here, amen, hallelujah. And again, like always, on behalf of Pastor Miller and Sister Miller, we thank God for you, leadership team of New Life, for allowing God to perfect your gift to carry on and pursue the ministry of New Life Church of Faith. Hallelujah. We have always said there is a book of remembrance in heaven that God sees. Hallelujah. Praise God. We do give honor. To you, and I would like to send a special prayer up to Elder Jerry Carter. He lost his brother on yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Amen. So we want to continue to pray for Elder Jerry Carter and his family. But it is a testament that he's here this morning, and he's having tragedy in the family, but yet he's here. And that's just a sergeant. Army blood is in him because he's a man that demand excellent in this ministry, and I thank God for him and for you, leadership team. Hallelujah. We continue praying for Christian Cunningham, amen, for the passing of his grandmother, amen. We continue to lift him up, and Minister Tia, who her brother passed, continue to lift her up in the name of Jesus. You heard me pray for our elder George Rowe. We thank God for his healing and Marcus Forrest, amen, for his healing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank, do thank God. 
We thank God that the ministry continued going forth. Uh, Sunday school was home this morning. Amen. My mother-in-law, Minister Charlene Randall, was teaching. Praise God. is on every Sunday at 945. They zoom in and also on uh, Facebook. Also, amen. Bible studies continue being carried on. We just thank God. And, uh, and, and this Wednesday coming up, our very own teacher, Christine Cooper, will be teaching. On last Sunday, I made a mistake, and I'm glad I asked the teacher that the, the, uh, Deacon Cooper heard me on uh, last Sunday because I said Christine Sanders, and she said he didn't hear it. So we thank God Deacon Cooper didn't hear me say that. But Teacher Christian Cooper will be going forth on this Wednesday Bible study. Amen. So we do thank God. Also, glory uh, morning prayer every Saturday at 7 a.m. and continue going forth. So we thank God that the ministry is still zooming and booming. For Jesus Christ said, upon this rock I will be in my church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Amen. We thank God for it. If you didn't read commercial news on yesterday, you might want to get a copy of that. Our pastor was on the front page of commercial news, on the very front page, and I think the title was New Life Pastor Survive Scare. Amen. So it's a beautiful write-up about him and what God did for him and raised him up off this sickbed. And the article was written by our very own Marvin Holman, who is a member of New Life Church of Faith. So we thank God that we do have some very gifted people at New Life. Amen. So you might want to get that article. It's a very, very beautiful article uh, on yesterday. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to get into this teaching. Amen. And we said that this is part four of praying but not believing the spiritual warfare side of it. Amen. But but what I wanted to do very quickly, I want to give you an oral examination on what we've been covering for the past three Sundays of praying but not believing. This examination, I want you to, I'm going to ask you two questions. I want you to answer this question yourself and, and then grade yourself to see how well you've been retaining information of, of what have been taught because we don't want to be a people where Matthew, uh, uh, I think it was Matthew 11 and 18, no, Matthew 15 and 18 said we don't want to be a people forever learning and never coming to the revelation knowledge of truth. You remember Jesus Christ with his disciples, they have been walking with Jesus for quite some time and seeing all the miracles, signs and wonders and then Jesus Christ decided to give them an oral examination and three of the four gospels in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Jesus Christ asked them a question after saying all the miracles here and all the teaching. He asked him, he said, now who do men say I, I, the son of man, am? Well, they said, well, Jesus, some say you're John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Well, Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am? Well, they appeared then called Revelation not from our Heavenly Father. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus then looked at him intently and said, well, I, blessed are you, Simon, the brother Jonah. He said, uh, 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 for this day I call you Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. At this time Peter had received revelation knowledge from God. Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't give it to you, but only my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. So quickly I want to give you an oral examination to make sure that, that, that you've been retaining information. Because we're going somewhere in new life. We're going to the next dimension. And we don't want to be a church that's come to church uh, hearing the word being taught on social media just for emotionalism. Time out for emotionalism. And time to get that word rooted to, and that we can grow thereby. Amen. So I want to ask you two questions of what have been taught the last three Sundays of praying but not believing. So the first all your examination question is this. I want you to just answer it to yourself. You don't have to uh, uh, call out or yell out loud. The first question is this. What are the three dimensions of faith that we've been teaching upon? What are the three levels or the three dimensions of faith that we've been teaching on? And what book, chapter, and verse is it found in? And, and, and I think I've been covering this so repetitiously and I, I continue to cover this. So really you are without excuse. So what are the three levels those are three dimensions of faith and what chapter and verse and book that is found in. I'm going to give you just a few seconds to kind of answer that to yourself in your own mind. This is to show you where you are in God and how well that you retain information. The three levels of faith and what book, what book, chapter and verse is found in. Okay? Okay. If you said 
If you said the fear you got to hear those you have home, if you say that the three levels are the three dimensions of faith, it's the measure of faith found there in Romans 12, verse 3, where God had given all mankind the measure of faith. Then the second level, the second dimension, remember, is unfriend's faith, which we said that is true faith or sincere faith. And that's where in 2 Timothy 1 5, where Apostle Paul told his young spiritual son Timothy, he said, I'm called to remember the unfriend's faith that is in you, that was also in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. Unfriend's faith. And the third level of dimension of faith, it is great faith. And that's found in Matthew chapter 8. That's in the conversation with the satirical soldier in Jesus. Amen. Imagine. So if you that's all those right, you, you did good. Question number two. Question number two. What are the three? Now, now let me clear this up. There are many types of prayers. And the most important type of prayer is the prayer of intimacy found in Matthew 6 and 6, where God told us, Go into your own room, close your door, pray to me in secret, I'm going to reward you openly. That's the most important prayer in the world. And from there, every other prayer flows. Corporate prayer, prayer of agreement, uh, intercessory prayer, prayer of thanksgiving, prayer of petition. There are many types of prayer. But what are the three levels or the three dimensions of prayer that we talked about? Remember, I gave an example in Acts chapter 12. Remember, they was praying with the young girl named Rhoda. There are three dimensions or three levels of prayer. What are they and what book, not books, what book and chapter is it found in? Give you a few seconds and answer that to yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you said uh, uh, the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24, remember it said, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, that's, that's the first level of prayer. When you pray, believe. Pray, believe is the second level. Pray, believe. And then pray, receiving. Okay? Those three are the mentions of prayer. Amen? And we said when we pray, it, it, it come it come into alignment with, with uh, 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 prayer of uh, the uh, first one, uh, the measure of faith. Measure your faith and pray and come right into alignment. Then we said prayer believing. Prayer believing come into the alignment with unfriend's faith, which is true faith. And then prayer of uh, Matthew chapter 8, praying with great faith, come with, come with the alignment of praying and receiving. Okay? So if you answer those, you did good. If not, and the reason I uh, gave this examination is to let you know we really need to be taking notes while the word of God has been taught. And the reason I said it because uh, once you receive the word, Book of Mark, chapter 4, Jesus said, once the word is being heard, Satan come quickly to steal the word. So we need to be a people that take notes that we can go back and refer to our notes in our own study time. Because faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. So let's get in the habit of taking notes while the word is being taught, that we can get that word rooted deep. In our mindset, especially subconscious mindset, amen? Hallelujah. This is how we grow thereby. So let's get into this word now. Uh, part four of praying but not believing. We're dealing with the spiritual warfare side of it. So let's turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 11. The book of Mark, chapter 11. And we're going to focus on the 23rd verse. Mark, chapter 11. And we're going to focus on the 23rd verse. Hallelujah. And it reads, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and should not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said it should come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said it. Now verse 23 is a form of prayer, but yet we speak it. And that type of prayer is for the mature son and the daughter of God. Listen to this. They know who they are in God. They understand the authority that God has given them to activate the power within them in the person of the Holy Ghost. And they speak it in the dimension of great faith. But that son and the daughter is making sure that they are in a ready relationship with God. What I mean by ready relationship, they spend much time in the secret place of God so they can speak to a thing. And that thing 
rain begin to move. And that's the mountain of our built up troubled trials and tribulations. Amen. That is a mature son and daughter of God and know who they are. And they pray and are speaking in a dimension of great faith. And this is the place where we want to be as sons and daughters of God, as king, as priest, as ambassador. We want to be in that dimension or that realm of verse 23 that we can speak to a thing and that they begin to move or that they begin to shout because we spend much time with God in the secret place and every time we speak, we're speaking from the mouth of authority to activate the power in us in the person of the Holy Spirit and the dimension of great faith and that they going to move. Amen. This is where we want to be. Okay. So now I want you to focus on doubt in his heart. Now understand we are praying with the measure of faith that we may go on praying with unfriends faith, uh, true faith that we may get to the level of praying in great faith or Matthew chapter 8. Now first I want to deal with that the term heart H-E-A-R-T heart. I want to really deal with that and, but, but the main subject is doubt but I can't really clarify what is doubt before I really get you to understand the word heart. Now the word heart it's mentioned 830 times in the Bible, heart. And it is used interchangeably in the Bible. Okay? There are times that God is talking about the heart of our soul. And you know, the soul is our mind, our will, our emotions. And within our mind is divided into two parts conscious, subconscious mindset. Conscious is how we make our decision, how we reason. Okay? And below the conscious is a subconscious mindset is how we remember. Everything is downloaded in our subconscious mindset, okay? Hallelujah. So now, so as we pray, heart, again, Mr. 830 times, then heart is also used interchangeably with the heart of our emotions. Let me give you an example. In 1 Samuel 13, in Acts 13, God said David was a man out of his own heart. He retired the heart of his emotions. Heart of his emotion. Okay? Then in the book of, of the book of Matthew, it said that from the heart, listen to this, perceive evil thoughts. Then it goes on and said, thoughts of adultery, fornication, murder, so forth and so on. So when we study the Bible according to uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show ourselves reproved and work with not to be ashamed of the word of God, but know how to rightly divide the word of truth. And we're going to know how to rightly divide the word of truth, especially when we study. And you see the word heart, you got to read the whole chapter of that book to understand which heart that God is talking about. Because the heart of emotion cannot think. Okay? So we got to discern, is he talking about the heart of our soul? Are you talking about the heart of our emotion? Very, very important when we study the scriptures, okay? So now let's deal with doubt. Very, 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 very powerful term in the kingdom of darkness. God's definition of doubt that he gave me, because I didn't like the, the dictionary definition. I went on the on internet trying to find a definition. I said, God, give me a definition that it comes to alignment in the kingdom of heaven. This is what God told me. Doubt is a seed of untrust and unbelief planted in the heart I'm talking about the soul of mankind. Doubt that we talk about verse 23 is a seed a seed that we plant is a seed of untrust and unbelief planted in the soul of mankind. In the soul of mankind. Okay? Now, I said planted, this is very important, because even with us praying, either with the measure of faith, or praying with our friend's faith, which is a true faith, or even with us praying with great faith, saints still have access 24 hours, 7 days a week, to sow the seed of doubt in our mind where there's faith. Okay? Are we good? Even when praying with great faith, even praying believing for a thing, Satan still got access to come along and try to sow the seed of doubt where I'm praying in the seed of great faith. Okay? Prove it to you. John 20, you don't have to turn there. John 20, talking about world famous doubt times. 
Thomas walked with Jesus. He was sitting under Jesus' feet and heard all the teachers, seen all the miracles. Jesus, and I, I, I hope I counted it right, 20 times in the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I counted 20 times where Thomas sat under the feet of Jesus and heard the prophecy where Jesus was going to raise on the third day. 20 times Thomas heard this. Okay? When they crucified Jesus, Jesus rose on the third day. He first showed himself to his disciples. Thomas wasn't there. And Jesus so showed himself to the disciples. The disciples were so excited. And when they did find Thomas, they told Thomas. And Thomas said, no, no, no. Unless I put my finger where they put the nails in his hand. Unless I put my fingers where they thrust him in the side. Thomas said, I will not believe it. After hearing the 20 prophecy, after seeing all the miracles, Thomas still said, I will not believe it. Eight days later, Jesus showed himself again, walking through the walls and walked through the door to his disciples. This time, Thomas was with him. And he walked up to Thomas. He said, Thomas, do not be faithless. He said, put your finger where they nail my hand. And put your finger where they thrust me in my side. He said, Thomas, then Thomas said, my Lord, my God. He was, he, he was in amazement. And Jesus looked at him and said, Thomas, Blessed are those who believe but has not seen. So Thomas had faith in Jesus, but yet Satan came alone and sowed the seed of doubt where Thomas had the seed of faith. Yeah. Okay? Now, I want you to turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 3. Let me show you how doubt originated. Now understand, doubt originated from Satan. Just like lies. Satan, the Bible called the father of lies. He's also always called the father of doubts. He's the originator of doubts. And unfortunately, 7.7 .7 billion people of this world, listen to this, we were born with the seed of doubt in our minds. Well, thanks to our ancestors, Adam and Eve. So don't beat yourself up when you pray and believe it, and all of a sudden the next day you're struggling with doubt. That's going to let you know you're in warfare. That let you know you're praying for the right thing, but Satan ain't going to just give it up easily. Okay? He's the originator of doubt. And because of our ancestors, 7.7 .7 billion people, when they pull us out of our mother's womb, they pull us with a mindset with the seed of doubt already planted in our subconscious mindset of our mind that's within our soul. We're good so far. Amen. Now let me show you Genesis chapter 3. We're investigating how Satan first got this seed planted in our mind that we was born with that is now set up as a generational curse. We were born with this curse, with this seed of doubt planted in the subconscious level of our mindset that's within the soul. Genesis chapter 3. Let's go there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 3, we want to read the first through the sixth verse. And we're investigating how we was born with this curse of this seed already being planted in my mind that we constantly have to wrestle with when we pray for a thing. Now, for I read in, in verse uh, chapter 3 of Genesis, now understand, God, everything was perfect up at this point. God said, let us make mankind in our image, our life, and let them have dominion. Everything is perfect. God planted a garden, east and Eden. Now, that word garden, understand, it's not talking about there's some cucumbers, there's some tomatoes. No, no, that word garden is everything was in order. Everything. God's a God of order. He's a God of kingdom law. Everything was ordered. A bush wasn't even out of place. And he said, put Adam in that garden. He said, dress it and keep it. Okay? There was no reason, listen to this, to even pray the prayer of great faith. There was no need. There was no sin, no sin in the world. All the thing Adam need, needed was the measure of faith that God gave them to believe that he's real. That's the only thing they need. They didn't need to pray with true faith. They need to pray with great faith. Because there's no sin, no disease. So everything was perfect. So here comes Satan in Genesis chapter 3. Now also, let me tell you this. God made sure that the authority he gave Adam was in great condition. Because every animal God created, God didn't name not one animal in this world. Every animal that God created, he brought it to Adam and said, Adam named this. 
God will make you sure that he had revelation knowledge of who he was in him and the authority that he gave him. And God said, cat, dog, horse, meal, you name it. So here comes Satan. Now again, we're looking to see how was this doubt originated in our mind that we was born with. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said you should not eat of the tree of the garden? Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree that was in the middle of the garden, God said you should not eat of it, neither touch it, or you going to die. That's exactly what God said. They repeated to Satan. Now listen to Satan in verse 4. Satan cunningly, with his sly sneaky self, he coming to sow the seed of doubt where the seed of faith was already planted in the mind of Adam and Eve. Yeah. Look at verse 4. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. Yeah. This, he, he, he was trying to plant the seed. Verse 5. For God do know that in the day that you eat there, your eyes will be open. And you will be as God, knowing good and evil. He slowly but surely digging up the soil of their mind to plant the seed of doubt where God had already planted the seed of the measure of faith. And when the woman saw with her eyes that the tree was good and full and pleasant to the eye, and tree to be desired to make her wife. She took the fruit of She did eat and gave some to her husband. And he did eat also. The moment they did that. That seed was planted. Of doubt in their mind. And we've been dealing with it. Ever since. Ever since. Now. The question is. How did Satan. Use or what weapon did he use to sow that seed in the mind of Adam and Eve? Understand, Genesis, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says Satan is the ruler of this world. He's the God of the world, Lord KG. 1 John 5 says everything in the world lies under the power of the evil one. Okay? Very, very important. Listen to this. It is so important that we take heed to what God said in 1 John chapter 2, the 15th to the 2nd verse. He said, love not this world or anything in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because all that's in this nasty world is the life, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Okay, very, very important. Satan is the ruler of this world. Like he did Adam and Eve, guess what? He uses the things of this world to tempt us through our five sense realms, what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, what we touch. He used our senses as fibers to release the seed of doubt. For example, we was in a dark place with our pastor as God would carry him through the prophetic tunnel of healing and restoration. And God said, I'm taking you to life in a dark place. I'm stretching your faith from the measure to her friends to great faith. Satan came quickly in that dark place while we was praying with great faith. Some were praying with our friends, true faith. And then there, some were praying with the measure of faith. But we was praying. Satan came quickly in that dark place to try to sow the seed of doubt for we were praying in our mindset from the seed of faith. And he assigned, and this is the spirit that he most assigned to sow that seed of doubt. It's the spirit of fear. Yes. Then he will use, he also called Ephesians 2 and 2. He will use, he the prince of power out, he will use TVs, computers, yes. and every other things to sow that seed of doubt where we pray with the seed of faith. We pray and believe it for a thing in this case our pastor. So we go to the computer and read about this virus. And we in good intentions. I just want to know about this virus. So we read about the virus and all of a sudden many, many have died from this virus. All of a sudden the seed of doubt have creeped in to try to take out on the walls of faith. 
We can be praying for a thing and it takes our posture. We pray that God will raise him up and you can be in a mere conversation. Somebody say, well, how is your pastor doing? We say, he's great. And then they say, well, you know her. This virus is something else. Well, my sisters have died from this thing. And they really don't mean no harm, but Satan just used them to sow the seed of death when we pray with great faith. See how the thing works? So don't beat yourself up when all of a sudden you're praying and there's a seed of doubt. That means I got to fight to keep my wall of faith standing that my prayer may be heard from on high. Hallelujah. Come on, Christian, give me some. Y'all give me some. Let's check it out in prayer. Amen. Amen. I don't know when we're getting out praying and not believing because part five is coming up next Sunday. I don't know when we're getting out. And I dare not get in the way of the Holy Ghost. Because he knows what needs to be taught. Because he knows where he's taking us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we see where you're taking us in the realm of the Spirit. We're praying, but not believing. They are coming to a series. Father, I thank you that you're taking us to a higher dimension. In the spiritual realm, also in the natural realm. And Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you that you said no good in the first would be a memorial as you gave us a prophetic word of your faithfulness. Then the very next day, you said she made a monument, but you showed us that you watched every word to perform it by raising up our pastor Thomas Miller from the sick bed. Then God, you also showed us 16 days later, you allowed him to go home. Then God, you showed us that he's already preaching on the phone. Father, we thank you. We thank you when you're taking new life, God. A blessing explosion. That we're going to finish 2020 strong. And 2021, a blessing explosion. But God, I see that you get our faith in order. Because we are a new life church of faith. And we thank you, Lord. It's marvelous in our sight. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. There may be someone watching on social media that may be asking, what must I do to be saved? Father, we pray that you're touching them now, taking out the stony heart, giving them a heart of flesh. And if that is you that's sitting out in social media, I ask you to pray with us for salvation. Lord Jesus, y'all pray with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. we have heard the word, of God. the word of God. And Lord, Lord, I don't know you like most church people. But Lord, Lord, I give you my heart. And I ask you to save me. For I believe that Jesus died for me. And on the third day, he got up just for me. And Lord, I thank you for saving me. And Lord, we pray for our tithes and offerings. Lord, I thank you that you continue pricking the hearts of us as your people to sow into good ground of New Life Church of Faith. And Father, I pray that you give them a hundredfold return, not just in finance, but in favor upon their lives. For you said, give will be given back to us, good men to press down, shake me and run it over. Will you allow men to get back into our bosom? And to test you and prove you, see, you would not open up the windows of heaven. Pour us out a blessing where I will not to receive. And we think that it shall go forth. Father, bless the ones that won't give, but really don't have the resources to give. God, you see their heart. Bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, you're such an awesome, good God. Father, I thank you that our families are blessed and very highly favored in the name of Jesus. And that we leave this place, Father, never in your absence. That you bring us back here at the appointed time. And while we're on the battlefield Monday through Saturday, God, remind us that we are in a war. Father, we thank you for the prayers that have already been released at the beginning of the service. We thank you for the warfare prayers of the chains that have been broken in the name of Jesus. And Father, we forever give you the praise. We forever give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless. Hallelujah.
Be careful with your gloves, with your mask. Stay six feet apart, wash your hands. Amen.